Hello and welcome back to another Tech Talk here at Vision Forward with myself and Corey Ballard. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you. I was going to, uh, I was going to cut there. Oh, we that was like the intro part. <laughs> On this Tech Talk, we're going to be discussing some iPhone and Android OCR apps. Now, for those of you who don't know what OCR uh, apps are, OCR is Optical Character Recognition, and it is a process whereby you are able to uh, take a picture of a page of printed text and have it read aloud to you. And so there's various apps that you can get which will do this, and we're going to talk about four uh, different apps and what we think the pros and cons are, and also some other OCR devices as well. So uh, here I am with Corey, and Corey is the man with the knowledge in this video. Um, yes. Yeah, there we go. His <laughs> confidence uh, obviously comes across nicely. Uh, so we have actually this week, we have been making videos on these four different apps. And um, during the process of making the videos, we got some good experience as to kind of the pros and cons and how they work. So uh, we have some good insights and we're going to share that with you today. So first of all, Corey, what are the four apps we're going to be discussing today? So the four main apps are Seeing AI, mm -hmm. Envision or Envision AI, I've seen it both, yep. um, Scanner by Voice Dream. Mm -hmm. And then the last is KNFB Reader. Got you. Now, uh, I know some of those are free and some of them you have to pay for. Some of them are iOS only. Some of them are iOS and Android. Can you give us a rundown of what is what? Yes. So seeing AI, it is free. And at this point, it's iOS, iPhone only. Mm -hmm. Envision AI does a number of different uh, subscription models. So there is a monthly subscription, I'm sorry, yeah, monthly subscription, yearly subscription, or lifetime, yeah. which obviously the price is monthly. I believe it's about $4.99. Okay. Yearly, I think it's in the 30s to 50s, and lifetime is 99 I believe. They do run a lot of sales, and they actually just launched a holiday sale as of yesterday, which would be December 9th? 10th? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometime in, mid, in the beginning of December. <laughs> uh, so check that out. It is iPhone uh, and Android, so okay, it runs on good. both. KNFB Reader, that's been out for really one of the, it was really the first OCR app. Mm -hmm. That is a paid app, ranges anywhere between $59, $99, both on uh, iPhone and Android. Okay. They run a bunch of deals as well. And then the last one is Scanner by Voice Dream mm -hmm. or Voice Dream Scanner. That is $5.99 and it's currently iOS, iPhone only. Okay, so there's a range of different prices there. Mm -hmm. Let's start off uh, talking about seeing AI just because it's free. So obviously a lot of people are gonna have access to, to that one. Yeah. Um, so uh, with seeing AI, we have the capability to uh, do the OCR so we can take a picture of a page of text using our phone's camera mm -hmm. and it will then be able to read that text aloud to us. With your experience using that app, how do you rate its quality of OCR? How good is it at figuring out what the words are? How clear is the voice that when it's reading to you? That type of thing. Um, I, I think seeing AI is great. For a free option, mm -hmm. it does a really good job. Its two main text reading channels or features are their short text and their document. And the reason I want to mention that is because I, I, I think both provide really good uh, optical character recognition. But that short text mode is really geared to just point your camera at text and have it read out loud. And it does a very accurate job, but reading a document is kind of tough. You know, it's hard to keep it um, starting at the beginning of a sentence, scrolling across your mm -hmm. page, scrolling down. Yep. So that's where document mode comes in great. And so uh, the ability to take a picture of a full eight and a half by 11 document, it's, the results come really quick. They're quite accurate. Uh, and so, I, you know, in my opinion, seeing AI being free, mm -hmm. absolutely a tool that anyone should, everyone should have in their toolbox. Yeah, I mean, sure. when you're talking about a free app, it, mm -hmm. you know, you might as well get it because you're not losing anything out. And um, there's definitely some things that I like about it. So the short text that you had mentioned, there's no requirement to take a picture. It's literally going to read whatever you are moving your phone over at the time. So mm -hmm. I think... Um, 
you know, that's good for labels and things like that when you're trying to identify just a small amount of text. And then I like with the, with the document mode, when you want to take a picture of a full uh, eight and a half by 11, um, it gives you the feedback as to what corners of the page it's able to see automatically. Yeah. And then there, therefore you can adjust the position of the phone accordingly. When it can see all four corners of the page or all of the text, it will automatically take the picture and start to read to you. Yeah, I love the, you know, the guidance piece is, is really, I think, a must have when you when you're working with OCR especially with a visual impairment yeah and then that auto capture mode where it tells you to hold steady and takes the image for you is great because then you know sometimes you get that phone just right but then you've got to move your finger to try to tap a button exactly, and now you've, exactly. you've, you've moved your phone on you so that auto yeah. capture is great too yeah I really like the ease of use with this one and uh, like you say the quality is pretty good mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think it would be suitable for um, especially for either people who have um, kind of issues in general just pushing the buttons on the phone you mm -hmm. know maybe to do the strength in their fingers or something like that mm -hmm. um, or just in general people who need like a very easy option this one does a lot of the work for you yeah um, yeah one of the things that, that seeing ai does uh, and actually only two apps currently support the siri shortcuts feature and what that what's cool about that is when you were just talking about somebody looking for a really basic, uh, just want to read a document, or somebody who might have some physical uh, impairments, what's great is setting up Siri shortcuts. You can tell Siri to read a document, it'll automatically open up Seeing AI and go right to the document channel. Oh, wow. So typically when you open up Seeing AI, it starts at the short text channel mm -hmm. if you've not rearranged those at all. But with Siri, in those shortcuts, you can go right into document mode and just start working right away. So again, it's limiting the amount of, of swipes and taps you have to do. So that's a that is cool a thing. great feature, yeah. yeah. And uh, I, uh, any disadvantages, from my point of view, um, I think the main disadvantage with most of these is just having to try to align your phone with the document in a manner in which it can get a good picture. And like I say, this one does a good job of automating a lot of that process, mm -hmm. but you do still have to hold the phone, you know, above the document and try and get it positioned without being able to see, uh, you know, what, yeah. uh, what the camera's looking at. So there's definitely a challenge there. Is there anything else with the, with this app that you think is uh, particularly bad or, or you know, uh, could do with improvement? Yeah, not, not, not that it's bad at all, and I don't. And this is not something I don't that necessarily needs to be improved. But it does not have offline recognition, ah. and so it does require some kind of data connection, either via Wi-Fi or through your LTE data through your cell provider. Um, so you know that's something to think about. The other flip side with that is that. Because it requires internet, what that means is that it's taking a picture of your document, sending it out to the cloud mm -hmm. to process that picture, and then it spits or sends the text back to you, which means yeah. privacy-wise, somebody else could have access to yeah. whatever you took a picture yeah. of. So. Although it is made by Microsoft, the app, and mm -hmm. I would imagine that their security is pretty top-notch. So, you know, hopefully that risk would be minimal. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, anything else to say about Seeing AI? Um, just the other thing I think that's great about Seeing AI is the other channels that are built in the other features. So you've got, we talked short text, document, currency, so that money identification, mm -hmm. barcode identification, light detection, color identification, facial recognition, scene preview, handwriting. Yeah. Um, there is so much packed into that free app um, and I know we're focusing on OCR, but that still is one of its uh, strong suits is all the other features that come in with just that one. It has app. to be one of the best value for money propositions in history. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> um, just quickly though, you had mentioned the handwriting there and that's, yeah. that is something in general, OCR is not able to read handwriting um, because there's so much variation in the way that handwriting is written. It's difficult to program a machine to understand handwriting. Um, however, um, you know, seeing a AI does have this feature and it does a pretty good job. Mm -hmm. um, if it's very cursive, it's not going to be perfect, but you will probably at least be able to get an idea of what is written. Great for reading a birthday card, yeah. something like that. Yeah. At least see who sent it to you. Yeah, exactly. Sure. Exactly. Cool. All right. Well, let's talk about our next app. Um, let's let's talk KNFB Reader because, like you said, that one has been around for 
for quite a while and yeah. when it came out it was met very very positively yeah. and obviously it's um you know it, it has Kurzweil involved with it mm -hmm. and Kurzweil with, with Ray Kurzweil were some of the you know innovators of OCR in the first place yeah. um, so it's definitely got a great uh, pedigree behind it um, is it being that now it's fairly fairly old is it still a good value proposition because you do have to pay for it yeah you know being between you know around the 60 to 100 dollar range it, that's a great question um, I think KNFB Reader still provides a really good OCR solution um, uh, experience. The quality, the, the fa how fast it is, is still pretty good. Now, caveat to that, one of the things that we found when we were doing these videos for, we, we have a, um, an upcoming professional uh, training opportunity uh, for professionals, and one of the things that we found was that KNFB Reader tended to have a lot of extra uh, gibberish characters yeah. above the, the document. And mm -hmm. we found that it was most likely either due to two things. One, that we weren't getting all four corners and all four edges visible. Uh, and number two, that it was picking up the grain of the table. Now, we were probably not following great OCR etiquette having a white paper on a white table, mm -hmm. uh, but it was picking up some of that grain in that white table, so we were getting uh, more than we got through with any other OCR uh, app, we were getting uh, some, some gibberish on yes. top there. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, with that though, it's still, once we got through that gibberish and got to the actual text, it still was very accurate and mm -hmm. it's still pretty fast. Um, some of the things that KNFB Reader does provide that the others don't where, where maybe that cost you know it, it's worth that cost is number one it does give you some extensive file management capabilities so taking a, a picture of a document being able to save it within your app rename it if you need to for future playback and review it is really nice um, there's a lot of really good visual settings in knfb reader so while you have, uh, if you're a, uh, a voiceover user, you can obviously use voiceover to review the text, but you can also use the built-in text-to-speech. So mm -hmm. while it's playing, you're gonna get some highlighting and you have the ability to control the foreground color, the background color, the size of the font, the type of font, the highlighting color. So it really gives you an extensive options on configuring both the visual and audio settings uh, to really to meet your needs. So that, that's something else that it provides uh, that the others don't do as extensively. That is nice. And also, um, I know that uh, you can do the OCR is, is done offline. Yes. So uh, you're not sending anything out over the internet, uh, which means if you don't have data on your phone, then you can still use the app just mm -hmm. as well. Um, and it's not using any data if you do have a data plan. Um, and then also you can do a multi-capture mode. Yes. And I don't believe seeing AI, seeing AI offers a multi-capture, does it? Does not, no, no. multi-document, okay. not multi-page with seeing AI, but with KNFB Reader, absolutely. Yep. And then some of the um, guidance features for capturing, so some of that image capture guidance is really good, both uh, giving you what they call their uh, field of view report. So that's going to tell you about your four edges and your four corners and give you hints on which ones aren't visible. There is an auto capture mode if you want that. It's a toggle that you can turn on and off or you can trigger the picture on your own. One of the other things I like too is that they have built some of that functionality into the hardware buttons. Mm -hmm. So volume down is going to trigger the field of view report and volume up is gonna trigger the capture image. Nice. And so with the, with the way you hold your phone, typically you can easily access those volume keys without you know, really moving your phone once you feel like you've got it lined up pretty well. So. Yeah, and that's definitely a big advantage because once you've got it lined up, then obviously you wanna keep on mm -hmm. staying right there while you take your picture. So. Yeah. Good. Uh, any downsides to KNFB? Um, I think, in, in my opinion, the two downsides, number one is the cost. Mm -hmm. uh, there is kind yeah. of a significant cost to it. And number two, I think all of its features, the file management, the multi-page, the tilt guidance, the field of view report, that's all great, but it also adds a lot of 
of cognitive load to the app itself. Right, right. So it's not as clean and easy, easy to use as some of the other apps. Because yep. obviously with extra features are going to come extra controls on the screen. Mm -hmm. So um, so maybe for more advanced users then. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Cool, all right, let's move on to our next app. Let's choose Envision AI for this one. It's got okay. a name quite similar to Seeing AI. It Is it quite similar to Seeing AI in general? I think so, in, in many ways, yes. Okay. A lot of the same channels or features that Seeing AI, seeing AI provides, mm -hmm. Envision does as well. You've yep. got what they call read instantly. That's again, pointing the camera at any text and it'll immediately start converting it to audio. It's got document, so doing your full eight and a half by 11. It's got color uh, detection, product uh, ID or barcode ID. It's got facial or person learning recognition. One of the other things it does different that Seeing AI doesn't do, and actually none of the apps, none of the other four apps we're talking about do, is something called object recognition or uh, uh, ob object. And that is that it gives you a list of common objects from cup, bottle, dog, chair, mm -hmm. door, and you can choose from that list. And then as you move your camera, you move your phone around with your camera phone, uh, uh, pointing out, when the camera picks up that object, whatever, whatever object you chose, your phone is going to vibrate and make a noise. And the faster the phone vibrates, the closer you are to getting to that object. So it's actually kind of fun to use it and it actually works quite well. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, in we, fact, uh, we, we did a YouTube video on this yeah. already on the, on the InVision AI app. So if you haven't seen it, then do check it out on our channel and we do demonstrate this particular feature using um, Corey's guide dog. Uh, so uh, yeah, it's quite fun and it did work really yeah. well. Yeah. Now, one, some of the things with InVision AI that I wasn't a big fan of uh, is number one, the, uh, first of all, the, the read instantly mode works fine, the, no problems. Um, so that would be the same as the short text exactly. mode in seeing AI. Yep, 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 that worked no problem. The document reading is where I had some issues. Number one, I was, it, it, there is some uh, image capture guidance but what it, all it'll do to say is not all edges visible, not all, all edges visible, right. not all edges visible. And it just keeps doesn't, repeating So it that. doesn't tell you which edges aren't no. visible. Don't yes. know if you're top, left, right, you know, yeah, and, yeah, and it yeah. just keeps repeating. And, it, mm -hmm. and honestly, it got to a point where it just made me more on edge. And like, <laughs> you know, I felt like, you know, it, it was just starting to, to, to just stress me out. <laughs> When we finally did get all edges, then it said all edges visible, taking picture, and it, and it automatically captured the yes, picture. Yeah, yeah. Now, I honestly tried, and as somebody uh, with really little to no vision, I never truly got it to capture the image on my own. Now, I'm quite confident that there are many individuals who can, and I think if I spent a little more time with it, I, I would have no issues, because I have no issues with seeing AI. When you you did it visually and were able to line it right up and it and, yeah. it, and it did work. It fine. worked well. Yeah. So that was one thing I wasn't a big fan of. Mm. Number two, the processing time was much longer than all the others. It does require um, online, so you do need that data connection again. Mm -hmm. What's interesting, uh, and as a side note, in the settings of Envision, there is this offline text recognition toggle, and turning it on or off really changed nothing in my opinion. Hmm. When I turned it on, which to me meant that offline recognition was available, and sense. I yep. turned my phone, turned off all data, mm -hmm. it, it aired out, it wouldn't <laughs> do it. And then turning it off, same thing. So mm -hmm. I don't know what that toggle does, but it does require uh, a data connection. And then even with that, the processing time was really long. I, I found it to be easily three, if not more times longer than any of the other apps. Yeah. And that can now, get very frustrating if you're just trying to read yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, now it yeah. plays a little tune for you. It's which a nice is, tune, yeah. It's fine. It's probably got the best tune out of all of them. Yeah, I and say. it's a shout out to Andre Louis from, uh, is Andre, the one who does job. the sounds. But, but still, yeah. uh, I, I, as much as I like the sound, I'd rather <laughs> not hear it as long. <laughs> um, and then last, the issue that I had was uh, Envision does provide built-in text-to-speech. Again, you can use uh, voiceover, but tapping that play button, I could not get it to play. Uh, yeah. Uninstalled the app, put it back on, still wouldn't work for me. Mm -hmm. So 
either it's my device or across the board they have a bug. So those were my three big um, kind of you know hurdles or challenges that I saw with Envision. And it's not Envision isn't cheap. I mean, it's got different subscription mm -hmm. options as you had said, but you know uh, none of them are necessarily what I would call cheap so it sounds like probably out of the ones that we've discussed so far that Envision would be the least recommended well yes and no okay iPhone yes Android because seeing AI isn't available yes. on Android yeah. and either is scanner that we'll talk about in a little bit mm -hmm. in my opinion on the Android side Envision is a really good option okay because there's less options on Android yeah so uh, if you are an Android uh, user, then I definitely recommend taking a look at Envision. They do offer uh, a demo period too, so you can play around with it and really see if you like it. Cool. Uh, and I guess yeah. it also depends on whether, how much you want those other features mm -hmm. um, as to whether that will be worth it for you. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so let's talk about our final one, which is Voice Dream Scanner. Yeah. I got that right. Yeah. Okay, good. It's, um, I've seen it both, scanner, scanner by, by voice stream, stream yeah. and voice stream scanner. Yeah. So either way, uh, uh, yep, make your choice. And, you can't go wrong. Uh, yep, you can't go wrong. <laughs> um, so um, this one, they the company who make this also make other apps as well, mm -hmm. um, and this is their OCR app. Now you said it was five ninety nine, yep. which is uh, you know a really good price. Obviously yep. not quite as good as free, yep. uh, but I from what I remember, this one did work very well. Why don't you talk us through? your experiences with this one? So, yeah, so there's a number of options that make Scanner really good. Now, first off, it does not have that short text or read instantly mode. So okay. this is strictly gonna be for capturing documents. Mm -hmm. It does have some, some guidance uh, capturing, so it, it plays the tone. The louder the tone is, the more text that it sees, and so you can kind of line your shot up pretty good. Uh, it does have an auto capture mode if you want it, otherwise you can trigger that manually so it can check those boxes off, it does a good job there. It does do multi-page uh, mode. Now, a step back just so people know, Envision also does multi-page capture, so okay. if you've got more than one document. But Scanner does it as well. So the only does... one that doesn't is seeing AI. That's correct. Let me just interject here. Uh, multi-page yeah. capture, for those people who don't know, because I realize we didn't explain yeah. what it is. Um, with multi-page capture, you're able to take a picture of multiple pages of a document before they're read to you. And so rather than taking a picture of one page, listening to that, then taking a picture of another page, you can just take all the pictures of the pages, one after the other, after the other, after the other. And then when you're ready to read them, you can have them all read to you consecutively. Yeah. Okay. And uh, Scanner does a great job of, of that, allowing you to kind of review your page, delete as needed, retake specific pages in whatever order. So that's really nice. nice. Um, the recognition is offline, so no data required whatsoever, mm -hmm. and it's crazy fast. Yes. It's yeah. almost instantaneous. Yeah. It reminds me a lot of OrCam yeah. And, yeah. on how fast it is and, mm -hmm. and, and, and how accurate it is. Yes. Um, you can use voiceover if you flip it into text mode. Um, you can uh, use voiceover or you just use your built-in um, play button and use its built-in text-to-speech. Mm -hmm. It uses the same kind of play button that people who are voiceover users might be familiar with Voice Dream Reader. They use a little uh, kind of an interesting play button, tapping on it plays swiping down on the play button fast forwards and swiping up will rewind nice. or uh, it, you can change that action for different text navigation units it's kind of clever and it works actually quite well and uh, scanner does the same kind of thing um, so all of those things with scanner make it a really good option it's also integrated into voice dream reader so if you're a student or you're an individual who uses voice dream reader a lot Right from your voice stream reader, you can tap your add button and, and once you have the scanner app installed, you'll see scanner listed as an option. So you can just go right into scanner, take an image and then it brings it right into voice stream reader or vice versa. If you're in scanner, take a picture and you want to bring that into voice stream reader to read and to save for future playback. It's really simple to do as well. Um, so those are a, a lot of the things I really like about Scanner. Um, I think it does for the price and how fast it is and how easy it is to use. It, it does a really, really good job. I haven't heard any negatives about this one. Is there anything negative about it? Um, I mean, it doesn't have all of the 
kind of fancy yeah the bells kinda, and whistles well and... not even just that but i mean like with seeing ai for example you've yeah. got all that stuff on the side it identifies banknotes it, uh, it identifies colors yeah. you know you can tell it you can take a picture of a person it'll tell you something about them so you know the voice stream scanner doesn't have those type of things but right. just in terms of pure ocr pure ocr great in my opinion probably one of the best it does not allow you to save files within the app itself. Mm -hmm. Again, though, if you have Voice Dream Reader, you can do it, but that is another separate purchase. Yeah. Voice Dream Reader is another paid app. So you don't really have the ability. Now, you do have the ability to export out your file within um, uh, into you know other apps, Files app or Dropbox or Google Drive, things like that. Okay. Um, some of the other things, um, uh, scanner doesn't have as many visual settings. It does highlight words as you read, but you really can't go and do much changing. Uh, you can change um, font size, but you can't do foreground, background colors. You can't change font type as like you can with KNFB Reader. Sure, so sure. the visual piece is, a, is more limiting. Mm -hmm. um, one other thing too that we didn't mention with the other four, and I think this is something we should talk about, is um, that there is something you can do with OCR. We've been talking specifically about taking your phone, your yep. device, and pointing it at a physical piece of paper. Yes. But there's actually two other uses for OCR. One being if somebody sends you via email an, a PDF document that's mm -hmm. an inaccessible PDF. And basically what I mean by that is it's an image-based PDF. And so it might, when you open it, it might look visually like there's text there, but all it is is a picture of text. And so voiceover or any other screen reader can't interact with it. It doesn't know if it's a tech, picture of text or a picture of someone sitting under a, you know, a pine, uh, I was going to say a pine tree. <laughs> sit under a pine. How about a palm tree? That makes a little well, more depends sense. depends on country. Yeah, I guess maybe some would be very relaxing under a pine tree. <laughs> um, but some of the apps will allow you to import a PDF into them and then uh, perform OCR on that digital PDF and then get access to nice. that text. So that's one. That's a neat feature. Yeah. And then the other is JPEG or a, or a picture based. Yes. So rather than PDF, mm -hmm. if it's a picture either that you took with a camera or whatever it might be, mm -hmm. you can bring that picture in and do um, PD, uh, do image uh, text, uh, image recognition yes. then yeah. uh, on the yeah. text. Now, yeah. uh, not all the apps do all both though. Okay. Um, so seeing AI yeah. only allows you to import pictures. Okay. So you browse your, your, your camera roll. Yes. And so yep. you can bring it in. Mm -hmm. um, Envision AI allows you to do both. Okay. Scanner uh, by VoiceStream allows you to do image only and KNFB Reader ah. does both. Cool. Both PDF and image. Good. So, there you go. That, that's all four apps. There you go. That's, a, that's been quite comprehensive. Very big nutshell. It's, <laughs> it, sounds like, it sounds like there's pros and cons to mm -hmm. uh, either and all. Yes. And also, it sounds like there's a really good variety available for people at the moment. Yeah, and I, and, and I think a recommendation that we can give is start out with seeing AI. Yes. It's free. Use that to practice both your short text or that read instantly mode, mm -hmm. so you can get used to pointing your camera, and practice with that document mode so you can learn how to, take, how to effectively take a picture of a full 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. Once you master that, if you find that you master it and you find that, hey, this is really helpful, then I would recommend exploring some of those paid options. Mm -hmm. And I think that a natural progression would be to go to voice, you know, scanner by voice stream being $6. Uh, it's again, kind of an, uh, I don't want to say a no brainer, but it really makes sense to kind of go there next. Yeah. Um, so start out with that free one and, and, and see if it fits, if it's something that works for you and then move on. All right. So we could talk about other OCR options, but the video is probably running fairly long as it is anyway. Yeah. So I'm not sure. Do you want to do that? Or? No, I think we should do a cliffhanger. Ooh. Guess what, everyone? I know how much you enjoyed this video. 
uh, both our winning personalities and the wonderful information, <laughs> there's more to come. There are many other OCR solutions, camera, uh, computer-based, standalone, and I think we can do a future tech talk on those. Okay, this is news to me, but uh, I will be more than happy to join you in another, another tech talk. I'll find talk someone else. Yeah. That's another skill. <laughs> <laughs> um, you could look, but you would never, you would never find a suitable That's replacement. That's true. That's very true. Um, cool. All right, so stay tuned to the channel then for another tech talk at some point in the not too distant future on some other OCR options which are not uh, phone based. I think that would definitely be interesting. Uh, we can kind of compare and contrast how they work and uh, of course if you want to find out anything about OCR options or any other assistive technology there are a few ways to get in touch you can call us at 414-615-0103 you can send us an email in focus at vision-forward.org and you can visit our website at vision-forward.org thanks a lot for watching I hope this video was useful and we will see you in the next video